Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about NPE or SNPE, Neural Posterior Estimator or Sequential Neural Posterior Estimator. So just a reminder of what the problem is. The problem is that we have intractable likelihoods. Uh, we want to find a posterior, but we can't write the likelihood uh, in an analytical form. We can only sample from it. And so we already saw that in the traditional ABC framework, there is certain ways to overcome this, either by rejection ABC or MCMC ABC. We need to define sometimes a summary statistic, a distance measure, and a threshold. And we accept points uh, as a sample point from the posterior if the distance between the simulated x given some data to the actual x observed, if that distance is below some threshold value, some epsilon. And we also saw that if we assume some structure between x and the posterior, then uh, we can utilize it uh, in order to improve the ABC algorithms. So the most basic form was the linear regression one, but then there was also a nonlinear regression with uh, atroscedastic noise. Uh, which use neural networks to fit both the, the function, the, the mean, and the variance. And uh, there was also an iterative approach, an adaptive approach, which improves this even better. Uh, but what all these improvements do is they allow us to increase the threshold and accept more points. Now, this regression adjustment improvement really starts this shift of focus in this field, in this problem, if doing a regression adjustment allows us to improve the algorithm so much so we can take maybe all the points or almost all the points, then the problem really becomes finding this structure between x and theta, right? So finding this structure between x and theta and finding structure is something that machine learning people are really good at. So they used more sophisticated algorithms that involved more complex neural networks, and uh, they uncover this underlying structure. Yeah? This, what is the structure between X and theta? And so indeed, the field is quickly overtaken by the ML people. There are two main groups. The first one is from the UK, led by Professor Ian Murray, and the second one is from Germany, led by Professor Jakob Macke. And these groups are more ML oriented, and so they are less uh, pure statisticians. But if we actually look at what these uh, new algorithms do, at least in the beginning, they are a natural development of what happened until that moment, yeah? So if we go back to the previous video where we stopped and we said, okay, we can fit uh, one function using a neural network to cover the mean and another function to uh, cover the, uh, um, variance, then there's some good questions we can ask ourselves. The first one is maybe why limit ourselves only to the epsilon ball that we accepted? And why limit us to some epsilon that is small? Let's say it like this. And in the first uh, linear regression adjustment paper, they really increased the threshold and uh, they increased epsilon to be 15 or 20 percent of all the points that you sampled uh, during the simulations. And in the next paper where they used neural networks and used nonlinear structure, they already on some problems were able to take 90% of the points and still be quite accurate. So how I see it is if you zoom in on a small vicinity of the X theta structure, then maybe you, have to, you can find something that looks like a linear structure. But if you zoom out and you look at the global structure, if you are no longer um, limiting yourself, constraining yourself only to a linear structure, you can find the entire true structure. And so really, maybe if we believe that we capture the true structure, we can just take all the points and we no longer need this acceptance rejection uh, scheme. Uh, another good question to ask, in the previous video, I mentioned that uh, the second paper used an adaptive approach. So uh, they took the first round, they did the first round of uh, rejection ABC with uh, regression adjustment, 
And then they used it as a prior, not exactly as a prior, they just limited the domain of the, um, of the, of the prior. And now they sampled from the prior in the next round. And if the sample point was outside of this domain, they just threw it and didn't do anything with this. And this improved the accuracy, but the one question is why only constrain the domain? If we could get the true posterior, so the problem is that in rejection ABC, uh, you just get the samples. You don't get an actual posterior. If we could somehow get an analytical posterior, though we could just use it uh, as the next round prior. We would have to make some adjustments as we will see, but this will, could also improve uh, our inference. So these two notions are exactly what Papa Macarius and Murray in 2006 realized, is that you first, you don't need to limit yourself to a threshold, just accept all points. So if you don't need a threshold, you also don't need uh, a distance measure, yeah? You can just throw these two ad hoc decisions. And instead of using this one neural network for the mean and another neural network for the variance, you could use something called neural density estimators. These are neural networks where you put it, you plug in some uh, parameter, some X, and it gives you some conditional distribution over that X. So the, the distribution of data given that X. And one of the MDEs they used is called MDN, Mixture Density Network. And I'm sorry, here it has to be 1994. Now, once you have this posterior distribution, if you want to improve the accuracy, uh, you can use it sequentially. So you do this uh, algorithm once, you get a posterior, and then you use this posterior as the prior for your next round. And th that way you narrow down only on the points that are really close to the actual X observed that you have. Okay, and again, since in the sequential runs, you no longer use the actual prior, but you use uh, the previous uh, posterior, then you need some adjustment. We will touch upon this in a second.